Now we're going to use the seasonal analysis that we created in the previous tutorial. We go to seasonal and we see here the different seasonal experiments that have been created. You remember that we have created this one UCCO8109 that was intended for analyzing the response of maize to plant intensity in Cordoba from 1981 to 1989. Once we have selected this one, here we have the different levels from 2 plants per square meter to 12 plants per square meter. We click on run and then we run the model. Now we go to analysis. We have here, click on OK, and we can save the results of the seasonal analysis. We have an extension OSR. We click on save if we want to save the file. And here we have special setup for seeing the outputs of this seasonal analysis. We can have a look at the summary data. For instance, let's go to harvested yield. We can see the summary data. In this table of mean, we have the mean and the standard deviation for yield of maize of the chosen variety and the standard deviation of yields. Okay, we can have a look at these uh, outputs in terms of summary. For instance, the tops weight is the total biomass. We see that the biomass changes from 7 tons per hectare to 16 tons per hectare and the standard deviation increases with the planting density. We can have a look, for instance, at the seasonal the total evapotranspiration. Sorry, we had not removed. Here it is for seasonal evapotranspiration from 270 to 394. These are the standard deviations. They also increase with planting density. Remove this. And we can do plots of the variable. In this part, we can use box plots, cumulative function plots of mean variance plot. Let's see a box plot for harvested yield was already marked and we see here the harvested yield for the six levels that we have analyzed. The box plot provides with the dot we have the 50 percentage which means the value corresponding to the 50% probability of the cumulative distribution function. We have also the 0 to 25 percentile, this is the, uh, the green area, the 25 to 75 percentile, the yellow area, and the 75 to 100 percent percentile would be in blue. We see here that the, that the 50% probability increases with plant intensity and decreases for the highest, which was 12 plants per square meter density. Let's see what is the corresponding graph, the box plot for total biomass. We see also, no, sorry. 
stops weight is the one that we, we plot goes like this you see that the mean biomass increases with plant intensity up to eight plants per square meter and then decreases and the level of variability which is the total length of this box is higher for the higher densities you can go back let's go again to harvested yield and let's see the cumulative function plot this provides a plot of cumulative probability versus harvested yield for two plants per square meter we have a rather narrow distribution function this is the one for four plants it increases and for six and for eight plants we have these values it's interesting that in for the higher plant intensities 8 10 or 12 there are some crosses among the distribution functions but they tend to be more or, more or less equal in any case the variability looks smaller for six plants than for higher planting densities in the mean variance plot what we see is a plot of the mean yield versus the variance in yield in general in this case we see that the variance increases with the average yield in fact of uh, eight plants per square meter has a somewhat smaller average yield with a higher variability and the two points that provide highest yield are those with six plants per square meter or five plants per square meter so we see that for any of the variables we can plot box plots cumulative function or the mean variance plots we can also analyze the relationship between different variables different variables for instance let's consider the relationship between the harvested yield and the uh, total evapotranspiration we select regress and we search here for evapotranspiration ET and here we're gonna select the harvested yield we can plot the means you see that there is an almost linear relationship between a harvested yield and total evapotranspiration or we can do the plot for all the values here we have much more scatter here we can also calculate the regression this is the linear regression between harvested yield and evapotranspiration these are the coefficients the intercept 118 and the slope 17.6 the square error is rather low we close this one if we go to the means when we plot the regression now we can calculate the linear regression now the goodness of fit is much better we have a slope of 34.3 we can select other variables for instance see if the uh, evapotranspiration excuse me if the total transpiration is better related to harvested yield for all values we see that the scatter 
is somewhat lower, but there is still a lot of, of scatter. But let's see if the biomass tops weight is better related to transpiration, as would be expected. We see here that the relationship is much better. We calculate the regression. The slope is 55.1 and the intercept is negative, it's close to a top. This means that for a given value of transpiration, uh, biomass production would be close to zero. But now the square, uh, R square is much higher, around 0.87. In the regression, we could use also parabolic uh, fittings or polynomials of first, second, third, or fourth order. Let's see what is the relationship between nitrogen uptake, if we find it, nitrogen uptake and biomass. Well, the relationship looks uh, quite clearly linear. This is the regression and these are the residuals. If we want to analyze the residuals for the different data. And if we consider the relationship between nitrogen uptake and harvested yield, now the relationship is worse. It is clear that for some of these data, the harvest index is changing. That's why relationships related to biomass are better than relationships related to yield. If we consider only the mean values, the relationship looks uh, much better. <coughs> so in principle, with all the variables analyzed for the time period from 81 to 89, which means nine experiments for each treatment, we can analyze, view the summary data, we can do regression analysis between different variables, or we can do plots of the three types, box plots, cumulative function plots, and mean variance plots. The mean variance plot provides an analysis relating the mean response that we can expect for a given treatment and also the variance which is related to the uncertainty in the results. In general, we don't want very high variances. So any time that we have the same mean value, it will be better, a better strategy to follow that providing the lower variance. For instance, in this case, it will be better to, uh, to, uh, to use 6, means 12 plants per square meter, than using 4, which is 8 plants per square meter. Thank you.